Hey old folks, how's everybody doing? It's a uh, dreary Monday. A normal northeast Tennessee weather. Sat down on the front porch of the cabin to let a fat man catch his breath. Thought I'd uh, make a little video. Uh, I've got several. I hadn't got the editing done, some longer videos. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Uh, Everybody that watches them, I appreciate you for watching them. Um, I hope you enjoy them. If you do, subscribe, like, share them, and come back and, and see if other videos. We got we got all kind of stuff. Um, I'm a fat man, so I like to cook, so we do some cooking stuff, and just like to pray around in the woods and sit on the front porch of the cabin. And uh, even had a caught a possum the other day. Made a little video about that. So, and then of course everybody loves the stories, but. I really, really appreciate everybody. Over 20 years ago, uh, in high school, I got my driver's license uh, at the sweet age of 16. <laughs> it wasn't a very special moment for myself because I had been driving for years before that. Um, most of the time with, with my dad, uh, you know, in the passenger seat. Uh, but I can remember driving back and forth to the flea market um, even to Jonesboro, uh, which is 45 minutes, 50 minutes from here uh, to the flea market on Saturday mornings uh, when I was 14, uh, 15 years old. So uh, a driver's license wasn't anything special to me, but, uh, but I got them and it meant I could actually drive to school. Um, so my dad made a, a uh, I don't know if I, you would call it a pack, but had always told me, hey, listen, I'm going to give you the same uh, opportunity that my father gave me. I'm like, okay. He's like, I'll pay for half of a car if you find a hundred thousand dollar car. I'll pay fifty grand <laughs> if you find a twenty thousand dollar car. Uh, you come up with your ten. I'll pony up the other ten. You want a five thousand dollar car? You know the math. He'd come up with twenty five hundred. Seemed like a fair deal. So uh, uh, keep in mind that you know I was a country kid. You know, so a new F one fifty was not <laughs> on the radar. You know, um, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to. I never have been able to save money real well, <laughs> but uh, I knew that you know, a lot of money was going to be obtainable and or I'd have to wait forever. Uh, a family friend who has since passed away had a 1979 International Super Scout II. Now, this thing was several things that I wanted. One, it just happened to be my most favorite color in the world. Two, it was four-wheel drive. Three, it was V8. Um, so that meant I could get anywhere I thought or felt I needed to get. And it was a uh, at a market price of four hundred dollars. <laughs> so, so, so I had my two hundred. <laughs> Dad came up with his two hundred uh, pretty quickly, and uh, so we go to Bristol and, and buy this thing. Um, it ran kind of. Um, the bad part about this vehicle was. Uh, you know, they made those old internationals with recycled metal. It was pretty much old beer cans, you know, because they used to be tin, not aluminum. So uh, this thing was, it was all recycled. And uh, when they set out, certain places get wet and they rust and rot away. So this thing had major rust in the rockers. And well, it did have major rust in the rockers. The rockers had fell completely out, the inner and outer rockers. Uh, so it was just the floorboards attached to the hump in the center. So uh, this thing did have a frame under it, but the floorboard set out from the, the frame. It did have bucket seats in the front, but when you got in, before you could put your weight in the seat, you had to shut the door because the only thing that held the driver's seat in was when the, with the door shut and you sat down in the seat, the top headrest of the bucket seat would lean over and hit the driver's door glass and that's what held the seat in and they kept it just from flipping out. <laughs> now, <laughs> that might seem a little crazy uh, to put a 16 year old boy in that, but that's what I wanted, number one. Number two, 
uh, it was golden for him because it was one of those lesson moments. Well, uh, you're going to have to fix this thing before you can drive it. But I did drive it. Um, I didn't have it long, um, but I started saving money and started buying parts. In and out of rockers, floorboards, uh, cab mounts, body parts to put this thing back together. Um, my dad's brother, Terry, had a, uh, had a little shop where he worked on Volkswagens and stuff. And uh, he is a metal fabricator. And uh, everybody on that side of the family is metal fabrication, paint kind of people. Uh, so we ended up putting new floorboards in it. But before, the, the couple months I drove this thing, before we got a complete new floor pan and stuff put in this old Scout, uh, you know, I just have to drive this thing to school, right? So, uh, so I drive it to school. Well, my best friend at the time and now, lifelong best friend from the time I moved to Kingsport at 10 years old, um, I met this guy my second week after moving here and starting school, the second week of school. First week, he was in Florida vacationing with the family like he was the first week of school every year for years and years. Uh, I turned 16 in July. His birthday's not till November. So there's a couple of months before he gets his driver's license. So the deal was, hey man, you come get me, drop me off at home, for a couple months i won't have to ride the big yellow banana wagon you know the, the bus <laughs> and uh when i get my license i'll come get you and help you with your fuel okay cool so uh so we start this process uh i'm pretty sure it was day one uh luckily enough for me i lived uh, right at two miles from my high school and it was a straight shot. My friend lived even closer than me but it was up behind a racetrack. And, well, so he got to school that morning and I think his brother took him but that evening he was like, hey, you gonna give me a ride home? I'm like, yeah man, not a problem. So uh, I'm just starting driving and this old Scout only had lap belts. There was no shoulder belts. Even new, this thing didn't have shoulder belts. It just had a lap belt. So we get in, I'm all excited. You know, I'm all big and bad because I'm getting to drive him home. He hops in. I start the old Scout up, get started. And he, <laughs> I'm kind of waiting and, and nothing happens. I kind of look over and he looks at me like, what's going on? I said, hey man, what about that seat belt? <laughs> True story. He looks over and says, Hey man, you're not my daddy. I ain't wearing my damn seatbelt. <laughs> okay, you're right, and I ain't your damn daddy. So <laughs> I got mine on, but I just want to be safe, you know. <laughs> so, so we leave. Uh, we make two right turns, and we're up on the road heading to his house. Uh, not a real busy road, thank God. So we're tooling along. Uh, and this road has a 90 degree left hand turn. <laughs> so we're tooling up through there, not going super fast. We're doing, you know, 25, 30 mile an hour. One of the slowest moments of driving because I knew the curve was coming. And so we're talking, having a conversation. I'm paying attention to the road. He's just talking and I'm listening and I make the turn. Well, when I make the turn, it's like you hit the mute button. No more Sam. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> no noise. And then before I had time to look over to see why he had shut up, the door slammed shut. <laughs> Bam. And I hear this god-awful smack. Whack. I think, he just jumped out of the damn car. <laughs> so I look up at the rearview mirror and... This seemed like it took minutes between all this, but all this happened within milliseconds, you know. Shuts up, <laughs> door slams. I look over, he's gone. I look in the rear view and I catch him. He is parallel with the road, about two foot above it and smacks the road. True story, face down, whack. The noise was his right hand. Actually, he was trying to catch himself and pulling his hand down so hard it hit the road. It sounded 
like you'd slap the water with a boat paddle, just whack. <laughs> so my first thought was, I have killed my best friend. Oh God. So then the second thought is, is well, what am I gonna do? You know, 16 year old mind, okay? Keep that in mind, people. Oh my God, what am I gonna do? I, 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 and I don't have no emergency brake and it's on a, an incline hill after the curb, so it ain't like I can just stop. And <laughs> So all this is rattling through my head. I'm like, oh my God, I just killed my best friend. Whack, the door jerks back open. Sam dives back in the car. The door slams shut. Click, seatbelt. <laughs> So then terror turns into laughter as he's looking at me and says, not a damn word, Kevin, not a word. <laughs> so anyway, we went through this 90 degree turn and that old rust bucket of a scout flexed so much because the body was just that rotten that he was leaning against the door and the door actually picked itself up off of the striker. Um, they didn't used to go completely around. They just kind of hooked like this. So it come up and opened and out he went. How I didn't run over Sam is, is beyond me. I guess just the fact that we went around the curve and we had just enough momentum that it slung him out instead of just down. Uh, it would have killed him if I'd have run over him. And boy, I'm glad it didn't. Uh, <laughs> that's, that is one of very many stories of us, that old scout. Uh, there's another one with when we had no brakes and we literally dukes a hazard to this old scout off into a field, terrified because traffic had stopped in front of us and had no brakes. Uh, wow, sometimes. Uh, we even had some times in a couple of his cars. Um, we, we were both in our 40s and it's surprising to both of us. <laughs> we done some stupid stuff. On a side note, uh, Sam is my best friend. And uh, when people ask, I, I refer to him as my brother. Um, I have a, a younger sister as uh, uh, my only sibling, but Sam is, is just as close to any brother that I could have. Um, uh, we started out life just in stories back and forth of of this this dude that was going to be my arch rival and I was the new guy come to find out that after I'd made uh, my newest and lifelong best friend uh, you know we were supposed to be these big enemies at the school you know but uh, it didn't work out that way for everybody but always it always didn't always through through life he actually had a uh, counselor at uh, our high school tell him well, you'll never even remember his name in 20 years. And uh, Sam told this counselor, you want to bet? We're best friends and we'll always be best friends. And uh, I even made the comment to my counselor after he had that little scenario. I'm like, hey, one of your cohorts you know, told my best buddy, we wouldn't even know each other's names once we graduated high school. And it's like, well, you're, they're, they're probably right, Kevin. I'm like, no way. You know, this is this is my best friend. <laughs> um, just so you know, if those counselors are still alive, you were both wrong. <laughs> we are now best friends, just like we have been since we were 10 years old. Um, there ain't uh, nothing he could call an ass that I wouldn't help him with, and vice versa. Uh, of course, I have a family of my own, and he has a family of his own. Uh, he and his, his lovely wife, and they, they have uh, a son uh, who's just amazing. Heck of an athlete, but best friends since the age of 10 years old. Oh, the, the stories he could tell on me, huh? <laughs> hey, wear your seatbelts. Call your best friend. Tell him you love him. See y'all.